Coming up on today's show, Tesla unveils Autopilot version 2.0, while you may have to wait until 2018 for a Tesla Model 3 if you don't already have a reservation number, and Audi's weird plans to both focus on zero emission and autonomous vehicles while simultaneously cutting developmental budgets for the same. These stories and more next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is only possible thanks to the kind donations of viewers like you. Head to www.patreon.com forward slash Transport Evolved to find out how you can make your own donation today to keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, October 21st, 2016. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and we're starting today's show with a midweek announcement from Tesla Motors that all cars rolling off its Fremont production line from now on will come with Autopilot version 2.0 hardware as standard, hardware which will one day make it possible for them to operate in level five autonomous driving mode. For those unfamiliar with that term, it essentially means that when Tesla has completed its software validation process, and gained regulatory approval, cars fitted with V2.0 Autopilot hardware will be capable of driving themselves without any human interaction at all, save of course for telling the car where you'd like to go. The video released by Tesla showing Autopilot V2.0 in operation is damned impressive, and Tesla CEO Elon Musk says we'll see a demonstration of the software in operation on a completely autonomous drive from Los Angeles to New York next year. When will it be rolled out for customers? Well, that's one for regulators and insurance companies to hammer out. I'm sorry, watch this space. This time last year, the world of plug-in cars was full of rumors of a new enigmatic car company called Faraday Future, a company which had big plans to beat Tesla at its own game in the plug-in vehicle world with fully autonomous, high-performance electric cars. It even had a big launch event back in January at CES 2016, at which, instead of revealing a production electric car, it unveiled an outlandish, never-to-be-made single-seat concept car, causing many in the tech world to question if we'd ever see a production car from the Chinese-backed company. Well, this week, Faraday Future announced that it's going to be unveiling just such a vehicle at next year's CES, one year after it disappointed us all with that bizarre concept car. Those who have seen some of its work in progress and experienced its test mules say that we should be excited. Although, as always, I'm someone who thinks that the proof is in the pudding. So roll on CES 2017. Back in 2011, just as cars like the Nissan Leaf and Chevrolet Volt were hitting the streets, President Obama announced a lofty goal for the United States – have one million plug-in vehicles on the nation's roads by the end of 2015, a target which, if met, would have placed the US at the forefront of plug-in vehicle adoption. As I'm sure you're already aware, the US completely failed to meet that target, with 2015 coming to a close and nowhere near the target number of plug-in cars in existence. But this week, we heard the news that the US has just reached its 500,000th milestone for electric cars, halfway to that 2015 target. Sure, it's way behind schedule, and we may not see the 1 million car mark until 2018 if we're lucky, but at least plug-in sales are likely to accelerate dramatically over the coming years thanks to cars like the upcoming Tesla Model 3 and Chevrolet Bolt EV. Let's hope we hit the next half a million cars a little quicker than the last. With Tesla announcing Autopilot V2.0 and plenty of other automakers working on their own fully autonomous cars, you'd think the age of autonomous vehicles is just around the corner. But over in California this week, there was some significant discourse between automakers and the California DMV about just what kind of regulations must be met before you or I can get a fully autonomous car of our very own. The biggest bone of contention revolves around a proposed regulation which would require autonomous vehicle manufacturers to fit their cars with a data recorder that would collect 12 months of autonomous vehicle usage data, which would then have to be submitted to the state before a vehicle could be deployed on public roads. The proposed regulation is actually an adaptation of federal safety guidelines issued recently on autonomous vehicles. But rather than treat it as an optional best practice, the state of California wants to implement it as a mandatory thing. 
And that, says Google, Volkswagen, Honda, General Motors, Ford, and many other automakers working on self-driving cars, could just delay autonomous vehicles from hitting the streets and dealer lots. Given that autonomous vehicle tech is seen as safer than human drivers, those petitioning the state say that California is holding back technology that will make our roads a whole lot safer. And there's just no logic in doing so. I guess we'll just have to wait to find out whose argument is won. Back at the end of March, California automaker Tesla Motors unveiled the Tesla Model 3 at a special reveal event in California. And since then, we've seen a huge number of Tesla fans and customers step up forward to place their money down for a refundable deposit on their new car. To date, those people have been told by Tesla that they should expect their new long-range electric car by the end of 2017. But this week, Tesla shifted its production estimate back for a new deposit holder, telling them that it would be mid-2018 or later before they'd get their new cars. The reason? No, Tesla's not pushing back Model 3 production, at least not as far as we can tell. Instead, Tesla has essentially sold out of all Model 3 cars it planned to make next year, which means those placing a deposit down now will have to wait nearly two years in order to see their car in the metal. Are you going to wait for two years for a Model 3, or are you likely to go for a similarly priced, similar range car like the Chevrolet Bolt EV? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Back in the 1980s, German automaker Audi unveiled a car that broke with naming convention at the time, calling it simply the Audi Quattro after the all-wheel drive technology that it would debut. Years later, the term Quattro can be found on many different Audi models as a nod to that iconic all-wheel drive vehicle, tying each model to that celebrated coupe. Well, now it turns out that Audi is planning to do the same with its first mass-produced long-range electric SUV the one that was until now referred to as the Audi Q6 e-tron Quattro concept. The reason? Audi wants to set a new precedent for naming, with the term e-tron being exclusively reserved for plug-in cars. Consequentially, Audi says the SUV it's readying for market will be sold simply as the Audi e-tron, with subsequent models taking on a model name too, tying them back to what Audi hopes will be another revolutionary vehicle. Unlike the first time Audi used that term, however, Audi has already produced several e-tron vehicles, so I'm not sure how it plans to explain that one. Either way, I can't wait to see the newly named e-tron and put it through its paces, and when I do, I'll be sure to share my experiences with you. We're back to autonomous vehicles now with the news that the UK-based Autodrive Consortium, a collection of automakers, governmental agencies, insurance professionals and academics, has been busy showcasing the latest autonomous vehicle technologies being tested and developed in the UK. At a special event on a closed track this week, Jaguar Land Rover and Ford stepped up to the plate to showcase their own autonomous vehicle technologies, including Level 5 autonomous operation on the highway, as well as a vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle and vehicle-to-infrastructure capabilities that could help save fuel and allow cars to react more quickly to changing road conditions ahead that a human might not even be able to see. And although these technologies are expected to reach the market in a few years' time, it's a great reminder that Tesla isn't the only automaker out there working hard to make autonomous vehicle technology the norm within the next decade. When it goes on sale next month, the 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV will be the first affordable long-range electric car to go on sale, beating even the Tesla Model 3 to the mid-priced 200-plus mile electric car segment. And as a consequence, demand is expected to be high for the compact plug-in hatchback. So high, in fact, that more than 30,000 Bolt EVs are expected to roll off the production line in the first year of sales. That's at least according to GM's battery supplier and EV partner LG Chem, which said during an earnings conference call last week that it's expected to produce over 30,000 battery packs for the Bolt EV during 2017. Now, in terms of first-year sales, that figure isn't bad at all and certainly beats the first-year sales for Nissan Leaf and Chevrolet Volt back in 2011. But we should also note here that 30,000 cars isn't all that much in the automotive world. Nor is it that much when you compare it to the number of cars Tesla aims to produce this year, somewhere between 80,000 and 90,000, all being well. Still, 30,000 isn't a number to be sneezed at especially when you consider the majority of those cars will be sold in North America. Let's hope these projections are met and exceeded so we see as many plug-ins on the road as possible.
Our penultimate story takes us back to California, where Mary Nichols, chairperson of the California Air Resources Board, told Ward's Auto this week that the state isn't about to weaken any of its zero emission vehicle policies that have helped plug in cars gain popularity in the Golden State. When asked if CARB was about to cave in on demands from automakers to make ZEV mandates less restrictive, Nichols said that it's highly likely the agency will go the opposite way, placing more demand on medium and large volume automakers to make higher numbers of zero emission vehicles, tightening up the restrictions and trying to make it harder for automakers to just buy their way out of trouble by purchasing excess credits from other automakers. Those credits, which automakers earn for producing zero emission vehicles, can currently be bought and sold under current rules. One idea would be to cap the number of ZEB credits that could be traded, something that Tesla isn't happy about as it has a whole load of excess credits to sell. But pretty much everyone I've talked to has agreed that the system is broken because certain automakers really aren't bothering to make electric cars or zero emission cars because they just buy the credits that they need. And that's the big issue that needs fixing. And finally, in a post-Dieselgate world, German automaker Volkswagen and its associated brands, Audi and Porsche in particular, are working hard to forge a new path for themselves that avoids gas-guzzling, polluting internal combustion engines and instead focuses on cleaner and greener technologies, such as electric vehicle drivetrains. At the same time, there's also a push from Volkswagen's various brands to bring advanced autonomous vehicles to market. But this week, we heard that as part of the cost-cutting measures the entire Volkswagen family is undergoing as a consequence of Dieselgate, Audi is dramatically slashing its research and development budget for both autonomous vehicles and advanced battery electric vehicle technologies. In other words, the company is looking to cut the very thing that could give it a chance at redemption in the future. Nope, it doesn't make any sense to me either, but Audi is adamant it'll reach its goals regardless. I guess it knows something that we don't. What I do know, however, is that that is your lot for today. As always, thanks for joining me, and please don't forget to leave your reactions and thoughts to the stories we've covered in the comments below, as well as giving us a thumbs up and a share if you liked it. And if you didn't, give us a thumbs down and tell us why, because otherwise we can't improve. Don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter at Transport Evolve, read our past and current articles at transportevolve.com, or check out our YouTube channel for our latest video updates, including, of course, our Thought of the Day daily weekday shows. And if you liked what you saw today, please consider keeping us independent and impartial by supporting our Patreon crowdfunding campaign from as little as $1 per month over at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved. We've just tipped the scales at $1,100 per month, which after my expenses becomes my sole salary. So I'm very appreciative of your help. Can't donate? Don't worry. Just spread the word, retweet our posts on Twitter, and make sure you tell your friends about this YouTube channel. As always, I'll try to be back next week with another roundup of the latest Transport Evolved news. So all that's left for me to say is I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a great weekend, and until next time, keep evolving!